Hi guys and welcome back to this final lesson. Jay here from borntoproduce.com. I really, really hope this course has helped you so far. What we're going to be doing in this final lesson is just making these sounds blend together, balancing the levels, balancing the frequencies and balancing the space. But obviously this is a super, super quick and basic lesson and there's so much more that we could do, which we do in our other tutorials, of course. So let's just have a listen, recap what we've got so far in case you've had a bit of a break. Right, okay, so as I said before, the vocal is getting totally lost. So the first thing we need to do is iron out these peaks. You can see you've got you know, a huge peak there, a very, very quiet bit there, bigger peak there, very, very quiet phrase there. And what we need to do is iron this out, or flatten this out, I should say. And so we're gonna use a compressor for that. So we're gonna to go to inserts, dynamics, and in the AI version, we only get this thing here called VST Dynamics. If you're in Elements, you can use the um, compressor. But this is kind of like a gate and compressor and limiter all in one. So the first thing we want to sort of look at here is this middle section here, the compressor. Let's switch it on. And basically, just in case you don't know what a compressor does, it turns things down after a certain level, a threshold, which is what we set here. So anything over minus 20 dBs, for example, gets compressed or reduced by this amount here, which is the ratio. And vocals, generally, you want between three and four to one, something like that, just as a rough guide. And you set the threshold accordingly. The attack is basically how quickly the reduction in volume takes place, and the release is how quickly the compressor sort of lets go of the audio once it's gone back down below the threshold. I'm not gonna go into it too much, but basically you want a, a quick attack and a fairly quick release as well. You can use auto on these things, that might help you. One other thing that you've got here is makeup, that means makeup gain, which means basically as we're turning the volume down overall, flattening it out, but it is turning it down, you need to sort of put the vol volume back into the signal. And makeup gain is how you do that. You can take it off auto and increase the gain here. But let's just play this and um, you'll be able to see maybe a bit more of what I'm talking about. So what's happening here is the input is coming in here. Whenever the signal, vocal signal goes above this threshold here, which is set here, we get gain reduction. That's what GR means and gain reduction. You, you've watched this bar, it's, it's going up and down and we're getting about eight dBs of gain reduction. So basically every time you hit, you see these massive peaks here and here, the compressor is automatically bringing down the volume and f therefore flattening out this signal. of the stars made to live in ecstasy okay so one of the things about compression is as it flattens everything out it sort of brings up the noise floor as a kind of trade-off so what we need to do is just go into this these vocals and take out all these kind of extra noises that we don't need and you can zoom into this waveform here by using this control here therefore you can see i mean we're going to hear them but just so you can see the sort of noises that you don't really want in between the phrases we are and the way to get rid of those is you can use a gate actually you could you could use this gate down here we are and basically when the gate is open it lets the signal through and when the gate is closed it cuts off the volume and so if you set it again it's a threshold based device and you've got to set it just right, otherwise it won't open and close at the right time. And basically what it's doing is being open once it hears, um, you know, medium to loud kind of signal. And once it hears these tiny signals here, it will close the gate. We are. So you can hear it. It was silent for those tiny bits there. If I turn the gate off just to show you the difference. We are. 
So you could use the gates or you can do it a different way. You can press number two on your keyboard or you can come up here and choose range selection and you can just turn off the what can be the bane of your life sometimes, the snap function. And you want to just maybe highlight everything in between each phrase, which is the range, the range tool, and press delete. But just bear in mind, you don't want to take away too many breath noises. If you go in and take away all the breaths, then it might sound a little bit unnatural because people are used to hearing breath noises. We are. So it's up to you which way you do it. We are. I've just noticed something else that we can do here. I'll go in and do those, take out those noises in a second, but there's another we. We are over here in the second part of this. We. So we can take this we here. We can chop it out. Uh, the reason I'm doing this, by the way, is just because the first we is just a little bit kind of rushed and we get rid of the, f the first part of the we. We. So all we've got to do is just delete that one there. Zoom out with G. Click this second we here. Hold down Alt or Option and copy it across by dragging. So we've just copied that we over there. And all we've got to do is line it up. Something like that. We are. Okay, so that was easy to do. Okay, so that's all the little tiny little sounds taken out. Press number one to get back to your normal tool. So we're starting to clean this vocal up. We've leveled out the volume. We've taken out the little kind of extraneous sounds. And the next thing we need to do is highlight the, everything and put a slight fade in on everything and a slight fade out. That will just help with any clicks, pops, that kind of thing. And the next thing we need to, to do is maybe add some reverb or something like that. Hit ecstasy. Okay, so that's a little bit extreme. So you can come in your Roomworks SE and choose a preset if you want. We are. Sometimes turning down the pre delay, which is the time it takes for the first reflection to come back, can help a little bit. The children of the stars. Turn down the mix as well. Made to live in ecstasy. We are the children of. And here you've got the length time. So, how long does the reverb ring out for? Too much and it will swamp everything, too little and it just won't sound right or natural. So, it's just a matter of. How you know how quick is your song? That kind of plays a high part in it, and you can also filter out the low part of the reverb, frequency-wise, or have more high level that kind of thing. Of the stars, to live in yeah. we... So this is dry. This is the bypass button here. This is without the reverb. The children of the stars. And this is with the children of the stars. And also to add a little, little bit of extra flavour, we can put on a little bit of delay as well. So you get mono delay in the AI and Letterly versions. And I think elements as well. And we're going to put on an eighth note delay and just turn these down a little bit. Maybe to live so just don't go overboard. Well, it's up to you. Obviously, it depends what style of your track, but probably don't need too much uh, percentage mix-wise. We are the children of the stars. And so that's the vocals nearly done. Let's just do a little bit of tiny little bit of EQ on them. It's always a good idea sometimes to reduce the very very bottom end in case you've got any hum, you know, electricity mains hum that kind of thing. But obviously don't affect, especially on a male voice, don't affect the lower you know, region of the male vocal there. And on this track as well, we can just maybe boost around two, I'm thinking, to bring it out a little bit. Yeah. 
And you can sweep along. We are so that's a really muddy frequency. So we'll, that's a really muddy frequency, so we'll just reduce that a little bit. We'll sweep through. Now I'm going to boost here around two because two reasons. First of all, to bring out the sort of clarity of the vocal and second, for more of a creative thing, to make this sound slightly more like a telephone voice and that's purely just because I think it suits the style of the track. But before, EQ. After. So I think that's coming out quite nicely now. So let's address some of these other issues. Guitar also needs the compressor. And to make this very quick and easy, we can just open the inserts on the mixer, which is F3, by the way. I pressed F3 there. And we can copy over the compressor from the vocals. Now, obviously, you would want to, in if you had more time, you would maybe do different settings. But just for quickness, let's copy over the VST dynamics that we've already set for the vocals and put it onto the guitar. So hold down Alt or Command, uh, Alt or Option, sorry, and copy it over. And we'll do the same for bass as well. So we've got compression on all these things and guitars, bass, vocals all definitely need compression. So let's have a listen. Now you'll find that you'll have to probably have to rearrange, or sorry, have to remix the levels. So let's do that. Okay, so let's just do a tiny bit of EQ on that bass. Bring out that kind of throaty bit of it, maybe. There you go, that's got that sort of throaty bit coming out now. And let's just have a little look at the guitar. Just to separate that guitar from the bass, I'm just taking away this kind of very low end of that guitar, just to leave a little bit of space for the bass guitar. So you might want to just maybe add a high shelf on this. So if you go to number four and go to high shelf, which is already on actually, just to give the guitar maybe a tiny bit of air. So before, after, maybe a tiny bit of reverb or delay perhaps on the piano. Obviously doing this very, very quickly. Sometimes also a good idea just to come in and solo your instruments and bring them in one by one, then you can get a real good sense of where the level should be. I've noticed that we're peaking again over here, so let's just highlight everything, hold down one side, click on one side, shift and click on the other one, quick link, and just bring everything down again, and it will keep the relative positions. Okay, so there's loads and loads of things I haven't gone into, like group tracks. So you may want to group all your drums together, for example, or all your guitars together. If you want to do that, just highlight the tracks that, let's say like all these were guitar tracks, for example, just imagine that they were right click and then go to add track and then group channel to selected channels. So all these tracks are now in a group channel and you'd call them guitar group, for example. And in the mixer F3, you now have a guitar group and all your guitars will be affected by this one fader here. So that's the sort of thing you can do. Just get rid of that. Now, there's one other thing I just want to explain, and that is about inserts and sends, because a lot of beginners have trouble with this. An insert goes on the track itself and it 100% affects the track. So. For example, the compressor's on there and it's 100% affecting that track. Ascend is something different. 
fact, let's do let's do it to um, to uh, kind of show you what I'm on about. This guitar, for example, has the amp simulator on it, but some of these presets, you know, they're way too much. They're way too rocky, too distorted, and you may only want a tiny bit of the wet signal, the affected signal, not the whole lot. So a good way to do it would be to let's just bypass this amp simulator here, and what we'll do is we'll set up an effects channel. So right click add effects track still going to be amp simulator on the effect it's going to be a stereo this time because you really want your effects to be stereo so they can pan left and right and we're going to call this amp effects there's two reasons why we can use effects channels uh, just about to explain the first reason that is so we can blend in the mix rather than have it 100 percent so now what we're going to do is going to go to the guitar channel and go to sends and you can do all this in the mixer as well by the way and what we're going to do is send a copy of the dry signal here to this effects unit here on this effects channel so the dry signal will automatically go out to the master bus as per normal but a second copy of it will come over to this effects channel and then if we just click down arrow tell where you want the send to go we want it to go to amp effects which is here we're going to switch it on and we can now adjust the level of the send so in other words we can adjust how much of this amp simulator we want to be blended in with our dry signal so what i'm going to demonstrate is have it on the minimum send to start with and then i'm going to increase this and you should hear the increase in effect let's just get rid of some things so you can hear it properly. There you go, so you can blend in the amount of effects you want. And perhaps if I put this on something a bit more obvious, like really something distorted, ACDC, go back to our send. So therefore we've only got a tiny bit of that crunch, not the whole lot, completely mangling our sound. Okay, so there's like a, a billion different things I can show you here, and I'm sorry if this is getting a little bit advanced for some people. Just trying to cover many, many different things, but all things that I think are relevant for you. Other thing I wanted to let you know about is, let's say you weren't sure what type of compression to do on the vocal because you're a total beginner or whatever. Then there's also these in the, if you click E for edit channel settings, you can come into channel strip and there's some presets that you can use here. So preset management, load strip, and you can choose from any of these presets and it will load up a load of, you know, compressor and EQ and all the rest of it. But I don't really think that's a good way of learning. Yes, it's good if you haven't got a clue and you don't really want to learn, you just want something that's going to work, then fine, use a preset or a string, of, a string of plugins basically is what these are, but I think you're better off adding a compressor yourself, playing with it, learning how it works, then adding EQ, learning how it works, then adding reverb, mono, delay, or whatever it might be, you know, just learn yourself how to do it. That's my personal opinion. So really the last thing to do is to show you how to bounce this out or mix it down to a stereo track so you can upload it or put it on your computer and play it to your friends or whatever. Just double quick check this mix we are the children of the stars. in fact what we want to do here is uh, just put on a maximizer just to get the volume up a little bit let's go onto the stereo out actually i'm not sure we can put a, we haven't got maximizer i'm getting mixed up with the artist and pro version but we can put limiter on and it would just stop the signal going over zero and we can sort of drive it a little bit to get the volume, the overall volume up. So it's going to put the, uh, the ceiling, we don't want the volume to go above as minus 0.1 and just drive this input a little bit to get a bit more volume out of this track. So basically a limiter is very similar to a compressor but it just compresses a lot more, basically not 
not two to one, three to one, it's more twenty to one. It's just it's to stop your volume peaking above digital zero, which is total distortion. So and you can see the game reduction here, three. I'll just back this off a little bit. Children of the stars me. Okie dokie, so we've got a really nice volume coming out now. Let's show you how to export it so you can share it to the world. So highlight your whole project and maybe put a little bit extra on the end just for if in case there's any sort of final snare hits or something and you want the snare to ring out, any reverb, anything like that. Just always add a little bit of an extra gap on the end. Come up to File, Export, Audio Mix Down. Now obviously name it whatever you want. Obviously this is where you want to save it to, right here. Yeah, you want to export the stereo out, just you'll never probably change that. The file type you may want to change, so I would recommend exporting it as a WAV file, because then there's no compression and you won't lose any quality. However, if you want to upload it to SoundCloud or YouTube or something like that, it's probably best to export it as an MP3. So you come down to MPEG-1, and in this bit here, select Attributes and Codec Settings, this is where you choose the quality of the MP3, 160, 192, 320, that kind of thing. And then just click Perform Audio Export, and it will drop it into the folder that you um, asked for here. So that's it guys, really. I hope that's been a really good intro for you. Now obviously this was a super quick demonstration. We have five hour courses on mixing, music theory, uh, we have Cubase Beginners course, which goes into so much more detail than what I've done here. This is super basic. And that course is number one on YouTube, as a lot of our courses are. So if you're interested in anything like that, then go over to www.borntoproduce.com and check us out. It's been a pleasure getting you started in Cubase LE, AI and Elements. I hope that it's helped you. Let me know in the comments if it's helped you. And I hope to see you again. All the very best. Bye-bye.